Good afternoon, everyone. I have been thinking about how many people, especially at this time, are feeling so anxious about money, finances, income. And I started to think about how we all have a money story. And frankly, I didn't even uncover my money story until a few years ago. And once I started uncovering it, I realized I had a whole bunch of bullshit stories and baggage about money that actually I still am working on to this day. So I am by no means a money expert, even though I do work on this all the time at my core. So that's why I'm bringing you somebody today who is an expert to help you unpack your money story. I want you to know it's nothing to be afraid of. It's actually very liberating once you start to explore it. And that's why I'm so excited to have Alexandra here today. She is a business coach, a launch strategist, and an author. Did I get that right? Yes, you okay. got it right. And I want you to listen to everything she has to teach you today. I'm going to be writing like a maniac while she's talking. And um, I'm just going to turn it over to you, Alexandra. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen, for having me. I really, really appreciate being here. And I, I love how you introduced that and in just thinking about your own money story, because I think it's so, so powerful. And it's um, what I thought we could talk about today, because we all have a money story and we always don't know that we have one. Um, so a big part of the work that I do really is around helping women master their money mindset and clear money, money blocks. And really open up to receiving at a different level and welcoming in abundance into their lives and into their businesses. Um, because it's my belief that as women, you know, we really do deserve to make amazing money doing the things that we love, um, but we often limit ourselves and um, we sabotage ourselves because we have abundance blocks, we have money stories that are, are keeping us stuck. Um, so, um, one of the things that I see, especially for women entrepreneurs, is limiting themselves, limiting their incredible potential because of these old money stories, right? And so the first thing I want to say to your audience is that if this is you, you're not alone. <laughs> we all have our stories. Um, and so many of us grew up learning the wrong things about money. Mm. Um, we had experiences, you know, we heard comments, um, we witnessed behaviors, we, um, you know, we were told stories in our childhood about money, right, in our upbringing, right, things that have impacted our beliefs and the way that we think about money, the way that we feel about money, the way that we um, are in relationship with money. And um, it's shaped our money story and it's shaped how much abundance we will allow ourselves to receive. So it's subconscious, right? That's what you're it's subconscious. You know, we've got like 60,000 thoughts a day going through our head. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the science that scientists have looked at that have said that, you know, 95% of those thoughts are actually, um, are, you know, they're just sort of like automatic default, right? And then like 5% of, of what the thoughts that we're thinking are actually like creatively consciously driven right? Where we're like directing our thoughts. Wow. And so, so we're mostly that, on autopilot. Most of it's on autopilot. Okay. So that 95% is just like, you know, it's all the backstory. It's all the history. Mm -hmm. It's everything that we learned and received in that early okay. upbringing, right? So when we think about it from a money perspective, you know, we can go back and go, okay, well, you know, let's, let's start to like uproot what that money story is. And so one of the tools that I wanted to give your audience is just, you know, how can you start to peel back that money story and really figure out how is that shaping what I call your financial blueprint, right? How much money you will allow yourself to earn, whether you're going to cap out at a certain level, whether your tendency is to avoid money, like just ignore it, turn a blind eye, don't ever look at your bank accounts, you know, like open your bills at the very last minute. Um, you know, maybe you've got a tendency to like, you know, as fast as the money comes in, that's as fast as it goes right back out, right? Like never allow yourself to be in a place of, of abundance, right? There's all sorts of different ways that we can block ourselves. So the first question I always love to ask <laughs> is, um, you know, did your parents have money? Like, how did your parents feel about money? How did they talk about money? You know, did they argue about money, right? Mm -hmm. um, just starting with the basics. Oh man, and that is like a can of worms right there, right? Because in my own family, there was this identity that we're Grimm's, we're just poor, we work hard, we're just never gonna have money. And that was the thing that you just saw all the time. It wasn't like anybody was saying it necessarily to us. It was just like this, this ethos that was in the house. Yes, 
Yes. And um, it makes, it shapes the experience, right? That's what I'm talking about with like, um, you know, it's sort of the habits, the comments, the experience, the mm -hmm. circumstances, just sort of the un, um, unspoken rule, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, and, and on the flip side, right, if money was really plentiful and joyful and like mm -hmm. celebrated and appreciated, right? Um, you know, you might have a different money story. Right. But also, like, I like, I love to ask, like, d digging in, like, for example, like, I've had clients who had, had the experience where, you know, their mother always had to ask their dad for money, and then felt really shameful and guilty mm -hmm. about that, right? And so, if that was your experience, you know, how did that shape your money story then, right? Do you feel guilty about getting, having too much money, Um you know, do you feel shamed when you buy things for yourself, right? That some of that can be rooted in that old, you know, that old story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everything that you've experienced about money shapes your financial blueprint. And um, you know it or not, right? Like you, whether you know it or not, you might not know that it's affected you. Yeah, totally. Um, I, um, I always like to say that, um, yeah, that it's like <laughs> so much of this stuff is hidden. And until you do the work and you ask yourself these questions, like it doesn't come out to the forefront. I um, mean, some of it is societal too. It's just sort of like we've believed, we've fallen into the trap of what are what I would call our um, common beliefs. And like, you know, even just like the little sayings that are cultural, like, um, for example, there's a maxim that says, you know, like no pain, no gain. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you just think about like how that translates into a story that so many women have invested in and really bought into that, like they have to work exhausting hours, yes. you know, they have to work to the point where it's like compromising their health or, um, they're totally stressed out. You know, there's just no time for anything else except for work, work, work. Right. And so you like don't deserve it unless you're working hard. Yeah. Like money only comes from working hard, you know, no which, pain, which, no gain, which is kind of funny because my family growing up worked really hard. My dad had a, you know, a very blue collar job. He worked a side hustle. We, we all worked hard but we had no money. So it's like, there's <laughs> evidence that, that doesn't support this, but it's this, this, this ideal that we have just imprinted on us. But it's sort of like this cultural belief that like, that's the only way that you can, you know, it, it only comes it's with struggle. Honorable way? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's like the honorable way to make money. It's the honorable way. Right. Okay. You know, there's other beliefs that are out there. Like it's, you know, um, it's not spiritual to have money or it's ungodly oh. to desire money. Right. And oh, so yes. then I've noticed this with a lot of women too. They'll stay stuck in this pattern of like, you know, of either like having just enough um, and, you know, but like never, you know, or not enough, right. It's either like just enough or not enough, but n you know, never more than enough. Right. Right. Because that would be, you know, unspiritual or ungodly and somehow greedy. Right. Yes. Um, I was working. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I was working with a client today and we were talking about, you know, um, this feeling of feeling really selfish for earning money. Mm -hmm. She has a husband who earns a lot of money and they're well taken care of and they have, you know, two vacation homes and their home and they can pay for their kids college and all these things. And so it's sort of like, you know, well, if I'm working and I'm earning all this money, is that selfish? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that I always say is that, you know, money is an indicator of your impact. And so if you are making lots of money, it's because you are having a positive impact in the world, right? As long as you're coming from that good hearted intention, right? And so I think, you know, I love to say that because I think it alleviates the stress that, you know, whether you're, you know, helping women, you know, like find the right outfits and clothes for themselves or, you know, coaching people to, grow their business or you're, you know, selling beauty products that, you know, help people feel better about themselves or you're doing fitness instruction or whatever you're doing, right? The, the money that people are paying you is indicative of the positive impact, right? How you are helping them improve their lives, make choices, um, do things for themselves that they want to do to, you know, feel better. 
So is it that your money story is affected by your deep, deep, deep self value? I would say so. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I think we, it is connected. Once we start to see our money story, because this is just the tool in of itself, like seeing that you have a money story is very powerful. And the questions that you're asking here, like you could spend days on those questions, really unraveling what's just in the questions you've already given us. Yes. But say somebody has invested the time and they don't judge themselves while they're doing it and they, they really dig deep. What comes after seeing that you have a money story and that it's affecting you now or limiting you now? Yeah, I mean, I think the money story is the tool to reveal, you know, okay. what's really up, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, how did people of influence or your parents, you know, um, craft, help you, you know, craft this story, right? Whether it's serving you or not, right? Um, what are some of the stories or the beliefs that you're just buying into? about money and whether you can make money, earn money, receive money, how much you can spend money, how you save money, like all of it, right? Um, what are some of the, the beliefs that you're currently, you know, are operating in your day-to-day -day life, right? That are guiding how you're making decisions mm -hmm. about money, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's sort of the, the framework of where you start. And once you, you, you understand what that story is, then you can begin the work of releasing okay. those beliefs, right? And reframing them and getting to the heart of it. Like, okay, where did the story actually come from? Like, uh, you know, my family is poor, we're just poor people, mm -hmm. right? Or we work really, really hard, but then we never make any money, right? Like that was a story that you shared. Yes. Um, but it's like, is that true, right? Um, and is that, is that story improving the quality of my life? That's a great question that I ask it's women. Like the best question ever. Right? Like, is this, is holding on to this story improving the quality of my life? Because mm -hmm. the answer is no, then it's like, then let's work on creating another story. Okay. Um, it's such and, a great question. I'm holding on desperately to this old story. It's part of my identity, but it like hurts me. Yeah, but it's not serving <laughs> it's me. It's not serving me, right. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, I, then it's like, you know, once you see that and, and as long as you're witnessing it from this like observer standpoint, right. With not so much judgment, then you can release mm -hmm. that. I mean, I know personally, like I started to craft my money story really, really early. Um, I remember being five years old and I was on a reduced lunch program. Like I, mm. my, my lunch cost a dime, you know, and everybody else has cost a dollar 10. And one day I lost that dime. And I panicked, like I just melted into tears in my kindergarten class. And I think, you know, my kindergarten teacher probably had like 30 kids in there, was totally overwhelmed, like had her own money garbage, right? Right, right, right. And <laughs> couldn't deal with me. So and, what did she do? You know, she, she shamed me in front of the class. Oh. And she was like, and you, you know, you don't even pay the full price and you lost your dime. Oh my God. And in that moment, I made up a story that I was not the same. I was different than everybody else. And I wasn't worthy of money. And I carried that. And I fed that story with all sorts of different examples and evidence that would like pop up in my life. And I would like hang on to it. Yep. And it wasn't until my late 20s that I was, um, you know, I'd had a series of jobs, but they were all very low paying and, um, you know, passionate, you know work, but I wasn't making any money. And then I ended up launching my own business. And I realized that I was like giving all my work away for free. And this is mm -hmm. like a main abundance block that a lot of women have. Oh my God. Yes. They give their work away for free or they discount it and reduce mm -hmm. the price. And I was like, you know, crap. Like if I ever want to move past broke, like I got to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And I started reading books and I went back and got a coaching certification. I was doing all this like deep internal work. And, um, and shifting that and allowing myself to start to receive, I actually, you know, I took one of those free clients and turned it into a six figure contract, like in a matter of a few months. So this work can be quick, mm -hmm. but then um, something happened and I was dating my husband. This was, you know, 20 years ago now. And um, he, a month into our relationship, he gave me this beautiful pearl necklace. And it was a really like, at that point felt like a very expensive gift. You know, now I'd be like, oh, that's great. <laughs> but my myself 20 years ago, 
didn't know how to receive that. Oh gift. yeah. Like you didn't think you deserved it. I didn't think I deserved it. And in the process of him giving it to me, like, I wish that I could say I was like incredibly gracious and like, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I love it. But I like went mute. Like I didn't know what to do. I just totally spazzed. Um, and it was because, you know, deep down, I still had beliefs that I wasn't worth expensive things. Mm-hmm. And you had that, even done this work. You I had, had turned some things done around. This work. So but I'm that was that, like the highlight. That was like the like the light bulb the light was moment for me, where I realized it wasn't just about money, uh-huh. but that your money story impacts the level of abundance that you will allow yourself to receive in your whole experience. So for me, it was like, holy cow because I don't believe I'm worth expensive things. I'm also like restricting the amount of love I will allow myself to receive, the amount of purpose I can have, the, the, the level of impact I can create, the amount of joy I can create. It was all of that. And that because was such a breakthrough moment. That's an amazing Such a breakthrough story. moment. Um, and that's the kind of breakthroughs that women can have when they start to do this work because money is so pervasive in our society. Like we do everything involves money. So when you, <clears throat> when you heal that relationship with money, you open up to the full abundance that life that has to offer. Everything else that can come in. Yes. Wow. And it starts with the money story. Yeah. Um, I, I still love this idea of shining the light on the money story because I don't, I, and I'm going to say this several times, like, I don't think people understand that they have money stories. I think that they're bullshitting themselves about it. I know I have done my work with money story and it, and it, it rears its head again. And then I have to do more work. And it re- it's not like you get to, like you're saying with your story of what the kindergarten moments, very different than the 28 year old moment. And you had done so much work in between, but it doesn't end. This isn't like you get to no. the end of the sidewalk and like. There's you know. no exit strategy on this work. I mean, that's what I always say. It's like, it's not like you're just going to be like, check, did that, right? Yes. Like even in my business, um, and I teach a course around money mastery. Like okay. I, I, I go back and take my own course again uh-huh. um, because it's like, okay, I got to this level and now I want to go here and I have to bust through some beliefs or I have to, um, you know, create a new vision, right? Or expand what I think is possible for myself, right? right. Like, um, you know, I I had a belief, you know, it's like if you have a belief around like how much you can earn, like I've worked with a lot of women who are like, oh, I've never earned more than $60,000 a year. There's no way I could be a six-figure earner, right? And then it's an like, identity thing. They don't it's an identity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so tapping into that and like figuring that out, or the only way that I could earn this money is through this channel, right? I've been a seven figure earner and I earned seven figures one year when I did zero work. Wow. It was based on work that I had in other years. Like talk about blowing through a belief yes, yes. that you have to like be busting your ass every, you know, second of the day in order to have something come through. It's so it was based on work I had done, right? Like I had earned it, but it didn't come about until I actually started doing work on a whole nother level of abundance and was busting through other beliefs. And then that showed up. Yeah. It's like so you just never know level, that new level, new devil kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. So I know that you have some um, ways that people can get started for free. You have some free gifts that people can yeah. get into their brains. Um, can you tell me about how we can access those? Sure. I think one of the things that I um, I had uh, talked to you about, it. one of the things that I love to do is I write and record meditations. Okay. And I think that they're, um, mine are really different. <laughs> so it's not about like sitting quietly and not knowing what to do with yourself, but, um, <clears throat> or trying to be like stoic and like bored. But um, a lot of what I do is set to like, high vibe music and it's very affirmational. And one of the ones that I gave you is a, it's called calling in abundance, calling in money um, meditation. And so that's, um, I love for women to listen to this because I think it's really powerful. It's a whole different way of framing up money, 
how you deserve money, how you can receive money and allowing yourself to get into the vibration of feeling totally comfortable. And I love it because it's, you know, they're really different thoughts. And what I hear over and over from women when they listen to this is that it really does start to shift their thinking. So it takes that old money story and it starts to break it down. Right. Um, and they start to put in a new program around what's possible for themselves. So that's that's a great one. Inside the other um, tool that I gave you is uh, called an abundant business guide. I'm okay. pretty sure I have that in there. And um, inside of there, it's just sort of like six systems to grow your business. But I walk through the most common abundance blocks. And I also give you some questions to start to peer into okay. what is your money story. So that's a great oh, place great, to start great, too. Great. Um, I'm curious, I'm just making sure I'm going to drop these in later after our conversation. Um, I'm curious when people get started doing this, what's the like, what's the biggest shift that you've seen any of your clients have? What do you think the biggest, like, Oh my God, I can't believe she did that thing was for like personal shifts that they've made or yeah, like, is there a woman who like the one who made, who said I never have made $60,000 more than $60,000. Oh yeah. Like, now she's making probably like two fifty. That's you amazing. know? Yes. Um, so you've seen real results with this. Oh yeah. I mean, she never thought she could get over a hundred thousand and mm -hmm. she was a woman who would wake up and have like nightmares. Um, About like would afford her life. Yeah, or that it was all going to fall apart, yeah. that she was going to go bankrupt, that people were going to be coming after her. I mean, like, really, like, desperate moments in the middle of the night, like yeah. anxious, sweating, all of that has gone away. Um, she's created multiple passive revenue streams for herself. I mean, just gone on to do amazing things. Um, because she's busted through a lot of those beliefs, right? And she doesn't wake up in the middle of the night anymore, yeah. restless and all of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've had women like have their first $10,000 months, you know, or have their best months ever in their business, you know, as they're taking my course because- be amazing for you to witness that. It's really, really powerful. Yeah. Um, I had one woman tell me recently that she, she used to feel proud of being poor uh -huh. and she had through this work given that up mm -hmm. and was now proud to be abundant. Yeah. Right. Do you ever meet people who believe I can't believe it until I see it? Like I'll believe in abundance once I am abundant or I, I, I'll believe I can be wealthy once I am wealthy, which is which which we both know as coaches is like. Uh, backwards way to do it. But do you think that's where a lot of your people come that that paradigm they come from? Oh, yeah. Part? And I would actually call it one of the major abundance blockers. It's sort of being stuck in the in the current reality okay. and believing that you're limited versus being able to tap into this, you know, unlimited field of potential and really living in the yes. embodying the future state. I, um, I have a meditation called your future self. And a lot of what I teach is is really like actually about the creative process is fast forwarding yourself into mm -hmm. that place where you've already done the thing, achieved mm -hmm. the thing, made the money, like succeeded, right? Like gotten to that, that place where you want to be. And then standing in that place, that's where you answer your questions from. How would I be investing in my business? How would I be approaching this, this meeting? You know, what would I be saying to this client? Right. How would I be pitching this customer? You know, what, what decisions would I be making? Right. How I, how would I be spending my money um, in my life or my business? Right. Because that future self, right. Who's already achieved it. Who's already done it has already been there. Right. That's it. The vision has been fulfilled. Right. And so you're just going to get so much more wisdom mm -hmm. and better information coming from that perspective than the, you know, and looking to the back, the limited broke stuck. I'm only focused on the, on the current reality. Right. Well, wasn't it Einstein who said something about, uh, the pro if you're looking to solve a problem, you can't solve the problem with the with the mind that created the problem or the situation that created the problem. So really looking to your future is a way to solve a problem that your current mind doesn't know how to solve. Yes, exactly. Because it's like the current reality is what birthed the desire, right? Like, mm -hmm. and so you you want to magnetize and energize and focus on and expand the desire, not the current reality. Yes, right. 
We already have the current reality. We already have that. Already have That's that. what actually birthed what you want to, to do, <laughs> right, right? So right. you got to go there and put your attention there. Yes. And the way that the brain is organized is pretty amazing because, and science has proven this, is that, you know, you have this like whole like reticulator a activating system, right? That, that when you, whatever you're focusing on and whatever you're like getting yourself into the mental place of, mm -hmm. um, like if you do a visualization and you see yourself in that successful spot, like, you know, in the meeting, speaking up, you know, signing the check, getting the deal, like whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. When you start to program that kind of information into your mind, then your mind begins to filter your current reality, looking for more evidence of that. And so it starts to tap into the experiences or the people or the situations or the outcomes, right? That will create more of that feeling because it doesn't know the difference between something that's happened or something that you've imagined happened, right? And so that's why that embodying, visualizing that future self is so important because it actually starts to train your brain to pick up more of that. I wanna make sure that people hear what you said. It's not woo woo, it's not magic. It is brain-based science. And yes. it's about rewiring your brain. It's just science. And so many people resist this work because they don't believe it or they call it bullshit or they will they have another limiting thought that that's for other people. That's not for me. But I promise you that it is for all of us. There is not abundance. I always say abundance is not pie. We're not going to run out. There is plenty of it. Yes. And you having more does not take it away from anybody else. No, it actually expands what's available for everybody. Yes. Right. I, I, I so love talking about this. How can people be, be come into your orbit and work with you, follow you, get to know what you're all about? Sure. I mean, I, the, one of the best places to come hang out with me is in my Facebook group. It's okay. Abundance Revolution. Oh, um, and um, I can give you the link to drop into that later. Yes, um, or they can find me on my website, which is alexandratakeda.com. Okay. Um, but hanging out in my group is a great place to come because I'm in there live um, pretty much every week. Um, right now we're in the, we just started a challenge called Be the CEO, Unlocking Abundance in Your Business. And so we're doing that right now. Um, we're, you know, I'm constantly running things like that to really challenge people to grow to new levels to, you know, whether it's your mindset or well, your I business. love the way you said it on your homepage, which is that you are fiercely committed to helping women become abundant. And you're just one of those bright lights who are, who's, who's like, there's enough for all of us. And so come play with me and I will help you get there too. And I think that's just more of what we need in the world. Thank you. Yeah, thank Likewise. You. Thank yeah. You. I mean, it's so, evident you're oh. doing the same, you know, having hosting all these amazing people and spreading all this like good work. Right. I mean, that's part of it. That's, I think competition, there's like a false illusion that there is competition and it's really just scarcity, right? Like there's not enough. Yes, 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 yes. There's plenty. There's, I mean, there's like millions of people. Well, every time I go out into the, cause I, I'm often in my little world of coaches and healers and all of the people that I surround myself with. And sometimes I'll go out into the world. I'm like, oh, right. Not everybody believes all this shit already. Like there's still plenty of people who need this help. So it's good to be reminded, like there's, there's plenty to go around. There's plenty to go around. And the beauty is that we all have free will, right? Mm. So we get to connect and no one's going to force anything on anybody. Right. Um, it's like, we all get to be empowered and choose for ourselves, you know, well, I really and hope people choose that up. to download the meditation that you offered and the questions that you've offered today and to get into your group because those are just free resources for people that can help blow them into the next part of their life. And so thank you for being so generous and showing thank up you. today. This is important work. I really am glad to know you. Likewise. I'm excited to keep connecting with yes, you. Thank you. Good, Bye, good Alexandra. Work. Bye. Bye, everybody.